The circus is supposed to be the front runner in the race for governor. Well, you know, politics is a lot like the circus. It's always better to be in front leading the parade than in back sweeping up after the elephants. <laughs> well, no, seriously, seriously, there are no guarantees in this or any other election. Do you think your recent surge in the polls reflects voter interest in your programs or simply a rejection of incumbent Governor Allison? I think it's a little bit of both. I think the voters have taken a look at Governor Allison's record and decided I might do better. This is how much will the voters like you and the program when they see this. Where'd you get this? What is this? That's a press release just issued by a young woman who claims to be your mistress. Now, according to this woman, you and she had an affair while your wife lay dying in a hospital. We're waiting for your comment. Mr. Mr. Richards, Richard, do you have a comment on that, Mr. Richards? What is your comment on that? Is that true what they say right there, Mr. Richards? Mr. Richards, Mr. Richards. Morning, John. No use campaigning here, Harlan. You already got my vote. Well, I appreciate that. Where's Mackenzie? Roping. Oh. Morning, Bill. Morning, Harlan. Thanks for seeing me, Bill. Yeah. Guess you know why I'm here. I saw the news on the TV. All lies. Didn't have anything to do with that girl. Do you know her? Met her at a fundraiser, had my picture taken with her. Then, you know, she started to call the office, and uh, I didn't feel good about that, so I didn't take the calls. Gotta believe me, Bill. Oh, hell, Harlan, I believe you. I don't think you got the imagination to take up with a girl like that. Will you talk to her for me? Just see what it's gonna take to get rid of her. Harlan. I've never cared for your politics. As a matter of fact, I'm voting for Allison. But you've always been straight with me, even when you were the DA. So I'll be glad to look into it for you. Thank you, Bill. Don't thank me yet. I got a feeling this ain't gonna be easy. Hey, Johnny Red. Check it out. Beauty, isn't she? Sure is. Now, what's an old man like you need with a sweet little bike like this? Well, <laughs> that's a good question. I guess I don't rightly know. Except it suits me. I'm sweet myself. You look like a leader to me. You think so? I surely do. So I know I can count on you to guarantee that this bike will look just as sweet when I come back as it does right now. <laughs> sure thing, old man. Appreciate it. You got a lot of faith in me, my friend. Oh, I sure do. I got your watch, too. Miss Moore? I'm Bill McKenzie. I know you. The lawyer, right? You weren't easy to find. <laughs> You're here to convince me to retract my story. So, what is Harlan offering? You're not offering one thin dime. Just a chance to tell the truth before I have to haul you into court. Harlan Richards had an affair with me. You've seen the picture? Oh, now, Miss Moore used to be the camera never lied, but with the tabloids and all that's over, you could you could take my head and put it on another man's body and swear that I was in love with Saddam Hussein. Just what are you offering? 
I can't for the life of me figure out why a beautiful and apparently nice young woman like you would want to destroy a man as decent as Harlan Richards, wreck his election, his political future, bring this grief to him and his daughter. Why are you doing this, Miss Moore? I have no choice. You don't. Whatever your personal grudge against him, I feel obliged to warn you that you're committing libel and tampering with the electoral process. Now, Mr. Richards is at this hotel. Here's his number. Please, if you won't talk to me, talk to him. Where is everybody? Send them all home. It's been a long, hard day. Well, I'm afraid I'm not going to make it any easier. I come up dry with Violet Moore. Damn that woman. She's lying. Why is she doing this to me? Uh, she wouldn't say, but whoever put her up to it, planted a tape recorder in her purse, they're not going to give up, Harlan. Now, you listen to him, Daddy. Hi. Bill, any luck with her yet? Afraid not. I tell you, you give me five minutes alone with that Miss Violet Moore, and I'll get the truth out of her. Now, Karen, you're a loyal daughter, and I admire your spirit, but that's a wretched idea, and you know it. Well, what are we supposed to do? All I can do is stand by my denial and continue the campaign. You saw today's polls. Unless we do something, we are going to lose. Then we lose. I'm real sorry about all this. Enough to vote for me? <laughs> You take care. You too, Karen. Thanks. Oh, I... Harlan Richards. This is, uh, Violet Moore. What is it, Miss Moore? Look, I've been thinking things over, and I've decided that I, I really can't go through with this frame-up thing. Mr. Richards, it's just not right. I'm very relieved, Miss Moore. Are you willing to make a public retraction? Uh, I don't know if I can do that. Uh, it would be a little chancy. Who put you up to this, Miss Moore? You know what? I really can't get into this over the phone. See, if they found out that I called you, well... Miss Moore, if you'll come forward and tell your story, I guarantee you my protection. I'll tell you what. I can meet you tomorrow morning uh, at 8, say, um, in your hotel, in the coffee shop. I'll be there. Okay. I didn't hear you come in. out the window he wouldn't have done that bill i know let, let me sort this out with the sergeant can you sit over here for a minute yeah It'll be all right here yeah all right bad business joe what'd you find nothing complicated he opened the window and jumped out 
Just like that? Just like that. Come on, Karen. You come back to the ranch with me. I just I don't understand it, Bill. Neither do I. We interrupt this program for a special news brief. Here's Dale Scott. The medical examiner's office has officially concluded the gubernatorial candidate Harlan Richards' death was suicide. Richards was recently accused by a former campaign worker, Violet Moore, of having an affair with her, and she was charging him with sexual harassment. Apparently distraught over the scandal, Mr. Richards jumped from his hotel room window, dying instantly. State political experts agree that the death of Harlan Richards guarantees the re-election of his opponent, incumbent Governor Ryan Allison. We'll have more on the death of Harlan Richards, including reactions from around the country. I might as well say what everybody's thinking. Congratulations on the second term, Governor Allison. We lucked out. I didn't want it this way. Everybody knows that, Ryan. Dan, you keep quiet about luck. Folks will think we're dancing on Harlan's grave. Lighten up, pal. This is good news for us all, so why not admit it? Yeah, it's a gift horse. Why look at the mouth? <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> I need your help. So I look like I can help anybody. My father didn't commit suicide. He was murdered. And whoever put you up to framing him is behind it. I'm sorry. You're wasting your time. Who used you to make it look like my father had a reason to kill himself? I need to know what you know. Look, lady, I got enough trouble, see? Just leave me alone. I'll make it worth your while. Leah? How much? Fifty thousand in advance, and I'll tell you what I know. I can get you fifty thousand dollars. Now you tell me what happened. First, I get my money. I'll tell you this much: the frame-up, your father's death. It was all about getting Allison elected governor. You get me my money, see? And I'll tell you something even better. You slept so late. It's eight o'clock. Yeah, that's what I mean. Afraid that just cold cereal cooks off of the flu. Well, then I'm cooking lunch. Good morning. Good morning. Morning, Della. Good morning, Bill. <laughs> Thank you for inviting us. Oh, the branch is beautiful, and the sky is incredible. Oh, I knew you'd take to it, Della. Lord knows you need a vacation. <laughs> you too. Trip, where are you out? You want to just rest today. No, sir. You promised me ranching, and that's why I'm here. Good man. <laughs> oh, oh, Bill. How many for lunch, and what time do you want it? Uh, just the ranch hands and us. Twelve o'clock. There'll be fifteen. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> oh, great, great. Uh, microwave in the kitchen? Oh, I never use it. Makes food taste like the Sunday paper. Uh -huh. Oh, I like real home cooking, Della. Yes. The stores are in the basement. Ken, I'll see you at the uh, stable. 
<laughs> Doesn't have a microwave. Uh-huh, 15 for lunch. I've got enough food for 15. Well, you had to volunteer. <laughs> While you're here roasting an entire cow, I'll be out on the range riding horses. Most of the men who settle these parts, including my daddy, came here young and illiterate. <laughs> so they developed terrific <laughs> memories and powers of observation. They could tell stories they heard 50 years ago and track strays across a high rock country. That's lunch. Boys got racing blood. Okay, boys. Right. Anybody there for second? Come on back All right. up. All right, help yourself. How about some bread here? You want bread? Okay. Good. Yeah, yeah. Good. Looks mighty fine, Della. <laughs> Ranch hands eat like they're gonna be hung in the morning, don't they? They don't even chew. No, <laughs> just swallow. Ah, time for lunch, Karen. Uh, Della, this is a good friend of mine, Karen Richards. This is Della Street, Karen, the best city lady I know. Oh, Bill, thank Bill's you. Bill's told me all about you. Thank you. Pleasure. Yeah. Nice to see you, son. Um, Bill, could we talk? Sure thing. Excuse us. Certainly, dear. Uh. <laughs> it's Harlan Richards' daughter. I know. Poor thing. So, uh... This is all about getting Allison re-elected. That's what Viola said. Well, tracking down Violet Moore was good detective work, Karen, but I don't like that part about the money. Yeah, uh, well, I was hoping I could borrow it from you. Well, boy, that's quite a lot of money. Bill, I will pay you back every penny, I promise, as soon as the estate settles. Well, even if you do pay her, uh, how do you know this woman is going to keep up her end of the bargain? Why don't you go back and stay at your daddy's ranch and let me look into this? Fine. If you don't want to help me, loan me the money. Ooh. I will take it up with the governor myself. Ooh, Karen. Oh, I'm sorry I bothered you. Now, don't go getting reckless. Great first session, the governor. Oh, thanks, Bobby. Hey, you work on mending those political fences back home. Well, yeah, I'm going to need you next session. <laughs> <laughs> Lots of success, thank you. you. Yeah. Bye. Got the whole legislature eating out of your hands. You sure know how to work them. Yeah, I meant what I said. Bobby's a good man. And I don't work people out. How long are you going to be in Washington? Sorry, miss. I well, I'll leave this evening and... You will see me. I think we need to talk, Governor. Karen, I don't think this is the time or the place. Oh. Then when is it? Your office keeps putting me off. Well, I wasn't aware of that. You call me next week, we'll get together. No, I think we'll talk right now. I know what you've done. You created this whole Violet Moore scandal. My father didn't commit suicide. He was murdered, and you're behind it. Listen, I know you're upset, and you don't know what you're saying. So you think about this, and you call me when you can talk rationally. Rationally? You're a liar! Hey, 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 hey. Have her arrested for attempted assault and battery. Oh, no, that's all right. Karen, I'm sorry you're feeling this way, huh? Come on, just get her out of here. Just get her out. It's not going to be this easy, Governor. You're going to pay, I swear it! Governor Allison, what are you doing here? You'll miss your plane. Uh, something's come up, Rosemary. I'm not going to Washington. But for right now, I don't want to tell anyone I'm in town. What is it? I'll help you. Oh, that's very kind of you, Rosemary, but this is private. I've got to make some calls, see some people, and uh, if you'll just place the calls, you can leave. Whatever you say, Governor. Hello? This is Governor Allison. Um, I'd like to speak with you privately. If you think you can talk me into shutting up, you are wrong. Karen, I have questions of my own about your father's death. I want to hear what you know and investigate further. Are you trying to tell me you had nothing to do with this? Well, I didn't expect you to believe me, but I may have an idea who did this. You come to my office at 10 o'clock. I'll leave the side door open. I'll be waiting.
We have a lot to talk about. Governor Allison? <sighs> Governor. the governor's office. Did you see anyone else? No. The state house was deserted. Except for the security guard who found me in Allison's office. Was anyone leaving the building when you went in? No. Why? Well, I got bad news for you, so I'll give it to you straight. Governor Allison's wife, Emily, claims that she was with her husband in his office till 10 o'clock last night. She says he was alive and well when she left him. And she saw you coming in the building as she was going out. That is a damn lie. She wasn't there. Well, the police don't believe her, do they? Right now, it's your word against hers. Violet admitted that Allison was involved in my father's death. And now I'm being framed for exposing the truth. I my father's murder and Allison's are connected. That could well be. But right now, we got our hands full with this one case. Now, if we try playing more than one hand at a time, we're going home with our pockets empty. You understand? Yeah. But I don't like it. We'll see what we can do about that. Got her out on bail. Sent her over to her daddy's ranch till the hearing. They find prints? Yeah, including Karen's on the murder weapon. There's a letter opener. She must have touched it when she found him. Sounds like you got your hands full with this one. Like swatting flies. Della? You. Come sit and have coffee. Uh, Bill. Did you ever think about getting a dishwasher? Oh, waste of water, <laughs> waste of electricity. You still have to scrub the pots. Mm -hmm. It sure is nice of you to pitch in, though. <laughs> Glad to help. Ken? Ken? <laughs> My foreman tells me that you did yourself proud this morning. You never tried branding cattle before, did you? Ever saw one outside of a movie? They sure kick a lot, don't they? Oh, worse than mules. Why don't we get you? Uh, I'm fine, really. <laughs> well, I'm sure gonna hate to leave you two out here all by yourself, but I... I gotta move into town for the duration. Uh, gotta be near my office. Bill, uh, about your case. Del and I want to help out. Oh, oh absolutely. Oh, well, I, I could use your help, but I promise you two weeks out here on the ranch. Oh, well, we, we've really had great fun, Bill, but uh, uh, it, just show me your files. No use arguing, Bill. We insist. Okay, I'll book rooms for you at the hotel then. You sure you wouldn't rather stay out here on the ranch and have fun? Morning, Joe. Thought your breakfast might have wore off by now. Coffee, donuts, chips. Fred, coffee break, courtesy of Mr. McKenzie. Joe, Ken Milansky, good investigator, works for Perry Mason. Sergeant Joe Whitehorse, Ken. Nice to meet you, Sergeant. Oh. Find anything? We found a letter from Miss Richards typed on her hotel stationery. It's a threat to the governor. Exactly, what does it say? That unless the governor admits his responsibility for the murder of her father, the same thing will happen to him. A typed letter? That's a frame-up, Joe. Maybe. But you know the prosecution is going to call it key evidence. Yeah. Place is all yours. Enjoy your stay, Mr. Molansky. How did he know what was in that bag? There's Navajo. We can smell right through plastic containers, even when they're sealed. 
Or maybe it's because I always bring him coffee, donuts, and chips. What's bothering you? Let's get our own photographer in here. Take a look around, see if anything catches your eye. Well, yes, I think so too. Thank you, thank you very much. Bill McKenzie, you should be ashamed of yourself. Defending Karen Richards? Governor Allison was a good man. He was a great man. That nothing girl just cut him down. She's innocent, Miss Sutter, or I wouldn't be here. You can't really believe that. I believe it. I mean to prove it. Any idea why Governor Allison canceled his trip to Washington? No. He didn't confide in me. What was he doing here in his office that night, do, do you know? Yes, he was talking to your Miss Richards. I placed the call myself. Did he tell you what that call was about? I assume that he was telling her to come to her senses and stop making all those crazy accusations. He would do that, you know. Give someone a chance to back off. Instead, she killed him. So, you didn't actually hear the phone conversation? I'm not in the habit of listening to the governor's phone conversations. Oh, well, no offense, Miss Sutter. I, I just had to ask. Did the governor make any other phone calls that night? A few. I'd be much obliged if you'd give me those names. Here's his phone log. Uh-huh. So, let me see now. These people all knew that the governor was in his office that night and not on a plane to Washington. Well, that makes them all suspects, Miss Sutter. Does that include me? Oh, I hadn't thought of that. Thank you, Miss Sutter. Now, the names on that phone log were the only people who knew the governor would be in his office that night. Dan Dixon. Mm, old political hack. He's been Speaker of the House since I was in diapers. John Orlando. Lieutenant Governor, smooth, slick. Uh, he came into office with Allison. Al Reinhardt. Young, aggressive, win at all costs. And Mrs. Emily Allison. <laughs> Professional, sweet, young thing. Now, Della, I'd be much obliged if you would dig real deep into their backgrounds. Shouldn't be too difficult. They're all public figures. Well, I can tell you plenty. Well, it's the private stuff we need. You know, the skeletons rattling around in their closets. This woman, Violet Moore, you told me about, is she still using the name Charlotte Webb and stripping in the same club? I don't know. Good question, Ken. Find Violet Moore. Now, uh, Karen, we're going to go over that night once more. Again? From the beginning. Excuse me. You know where I can find the owner? Who wants to know? Name's Melansky. I'm working with Bill McKenzie. I'm looking for Charlotte Webb. Well, you came to the wrong place. She up and quit. Could I trouble you for Charlotte's home? Home address? Oh, it's no trouble. I ain't got it. Well, it'll probably be on her employment application if you could just look it up for me. Why don't you just uh, talk to my personal secretary? <laughs> I think we could probably, uh, probably work something out here. You know, it's... Uh...
It's me. Just had a run-in with a guy named Melansky. He knows about Violet. Looking for something. Who are you? My name is Molansky. I'm a friend of Charlotte Webb's. Rang the front bell, but nobody answered. I ain't hear no bell. Maybe it's broken. I'm looking for Charlotte. You know where I can find her? Right this minute. I suppose she's off somewhere doing something she likes. And you? You like throwing clothes around a room? Violet asked me to pack some of her things, and uh, I'm afraid I'm not too tidy. And I'm afraid you're not telling the truth. <laughs> You're right. Thank you, miss. Ah, uh, Mr. McKenzie, what can I do for you? Uh, I guess you know I'm representing Karen Richards. I've heard, and I won't hold it against you, but I will tell you straight out. That girl killed the best man who ever lived. Well, I'm aware that you and Allison were close. We were partners in our law firm, Allison and Reinhardt, until Ryan was elected governor. Now, Allison called you the night he was murdered. Uh, what, what do you want? Just to bounce around a couple ideas he had about the next session of legislature. That was the last time I spoke to Ryan. Uh, forgive me if some of these questions are a little painful. There was an incident about a year ago, uh, you and your wife uh, were at a party where Allison was over imbibing and some of his favorite sipping whiskey. The three of you left together, and on the way home there was an accident, and your wife was killed. Is that right? That is right. I'm sorry. The way I hear it, you were so taken up with grief you couldn't work for a couple of months. Now, Ryan kindly gave me a leave of absence. Now. You and Allison both reported that you were the one driving that night, that you hadn't been drinking, so you took the wheel. Well, that's exactly what happened. Officially, yeah, but the rumor circling around town is that Allison was driving drunk and that uh, you took the blame because if he'd been charged with a drunk driving felony, he'd never been elected. That's not a rumor. That's a lie spread by Ryan's political enemies, and you shouldn't listen to them. I try not to. Well, then why are you bringing it up? What does that accident have to do with Ryan's murder? It could make you a suspect. Me? That is a libelous and malicious accusation, sir. It's not an accusation. Oh, I'm just supposing. I don't make accusations I can't back up. Then use your head, man. If I was so loyal to Governor Allison that I'd take the blame for an accident he caused, why would I turn around and kill him, hmm? I don't have the answer to that. But one answer might be that uh, once Allison was reelected and you didn't need him anymore, you could do what you wanted to all along. Kill the man who caused your wife's death. Just suppose. I won't take up any more of your time. Thank you, Mr. Reinhardt. Still, something might be busted. Do you want me to call 911? They'll be here in a flash. No, I'm... All right. I think. Those guys that were here, where'd they go? I don't know. When I got here, you were alone. You mind telling me what's going on? First, my name's Ken Melansky. Hello. Hello, Jennifer Taylor. I live here. What are you doing here? I'm looking for Charlotte Webb. Oh! 
We're roommates, just for the last few months. Before her, I roomed with this fella named Ted, took off with my stereo. Looks like you have bad luck with roommates. Charlotte isn't Charlotte, she's Violet Moore, the woman who got Harlan Richards involved in a sex scandal. You mean I've been sleeping under the same roof as a celebrity and I didn't even know? Are you a reporter? Ask me anything. She always drank Diet Cola for breakfast. Look, I'm not a reporter. I'm looking for Violet because she's in trouble. Somebody's after her. You mean bad guys? Well, they're not Boy Scouts. Charlotte, I mean Violet. She's in real trouble. I have to find her before they do. Can you help me, Jennifer? Oh, you kidding? Look, I work down at So and Safe. You know, 17 locations throughout the state to serve your homemaking needs. Help you save a celebrity from bad guys? <laughs> Life don't get more exciting. Let's hope not. What can you tell me about Violet? She was a cat in a room full of rocking chairs, always about to fly out of her skin. Then, last night, she tells me she's going to check into a motel for a couple of nights. She doesn't say why. Wants me to come back and pack up her stuff and bring it to her. That's why I came home early. Well, where is this motel? I'll show it to you. Well, why not tell me? No, sir. When reporters come around hunting down this story, I want to know what happened. You'll probably wind up on a roll, though. Come on, let's go. Wait till the girls at the so-and-save hear about this. Hey. Why don't you put a sign up out there in that parking lot warning folks about the fresh asphalt? I could have ruined my best boots. <laughs> Guess the state expects folks to know that every time the thermometer hits 90 degrees, it gets a little sticky. Well, let me have some newspaper, will you? Great blue salted snakes. <laughs> Oh, you want to drink McKinley? No, no, no. Uh, just uh, let, let me have some paper. I want to clean my boots. Uh, we can reschedule. No, no. Let's get on with it. Now, look. Uh, the governor called you uh, the night he was killed, so that means you knew he wasn't going to Washington. Oh, of course I knew. The governor never changed plans without informing me first. Now, we were friends as well as colleagues. Uh, I reckon you need all the friends you can get when you're being investigated by the state ethics committee. Oh, now, Mr. McKenzie, you don't want to believe all that talk about not taking bribes. You're savvy enough to know that those charges are trumped up by my political opponents. Boy, oh, <laughs> that sounds like a campaign speech to me. <laughs> Allison always sided you against your opponents, didn't he? Until lately. Right to the end. He was always standing right there beside me. Officially, yeah. But uh, I've been going over all the governor's press statements about you, and I don't believe he ever once said that you didn't do anything wrong. Just said he wouldn't interfere with the investigating committee. Well, that was the proper thing for him to do. But not too supportive. Just what is your point, Mr. McKinley? My point is this. If Allison were still alive, you'd be out there alone now, twisting in the wind. You're saying Ryan's death benefits me? Well, everybody knows you and Lieutenant Governor Orlando are close. Now he's the governor. And I see by this morning's paper that your investigation's been put on hold now. Isn't that coincidental? Doesn't that give you a pretty good motive for murder? <laughs> you know... LPJ used to spin out stories like that. All speculation, what ifs. <laughs> Some folks took offense, but I always found it delightful. You know, imagination makes a politician interesting. But I never did like it very much in a lawyer, concerned as he should be with the facts. Now, the night Ryan Allison died, he gave me his solemn promise that he'd stand by me in my committee fight. Your voice is sincere. Your smile is steady, and you look a man straight in the eyes when you're making a point. If I was a voter, I'd be downright dazzled. Instead, I'm sitting here trying to figure out whether what you're telling me is a God's honest truth or an LBJ story. I'll try to take that as a compliment, Mr. McKenzie. Uh, that promise he made, the one he gave you the night you met him in his office. Uh, no, no, no. I, 
I never did see the governor that night. I only spoke to him on the phone. I spent most of that evening taking my ease at the Cattlemen's Club, where I've been a member for years. Join me there for dinner some night. Anything else I can do to help you? You don't clean boots, do you? <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Dixon, I'm sure we'll be speaking again. It's room number two. Oh, my God. Sundown Motel, room number two. Yes, Violet Moore. Yes, she's dead. Look, I gotta get back there. Melansky, Ken Melansky. M-A-L, just like it sounds. What's going on, Sergeant? You reported her murder, Mr. Molansky. Yeah, Violet Moore. Where's Jennifer? I arrived here with Jennifer Taylor, her roommate. Miss Moore was dead on the floor, shot by the look of it. Saw a man go out the bathroom window, pursued him, and got away. Will you step this way? After you. Where's the body? Where's Jennifer? Not here. We checked every room in the motel. No sign of Violet Moore or anything that looks like a murder. I don't get it. <laughs> this is your idea of a joke, Mr. Melansky? This is no joke. Then get some rest, Mr. Melansky. Please forgive me for intruding, Ms. Allison. This got to be a very, very hard time for you. Well, would you like some coffee? No, thank you, ma'am. No, something stronger? No, I'm fine. No, all right. Please. Thank you. We're never prepared for things like this, are we? Murder. It happens to other people. People we don't know. Still expect Ryan to come through that door. Yes, ma'am. His friends and colleagues. They've been so wonderful to me. They've sent letters and cards and stopped by to see me. I've given each one of them something of Ryan's to remember him by. Well, now, uh, wasn't that thoughtful? How can you defend Karen Richards? I know who you are and I know what people say about you. I thought you were an honorable man. I'm a particular man, Mrs. Allison, and a fortunate one. 
I'm not obliged to defend anybody that I don't believe to be innocent. Karen Richards is innocent. Why did you come here? I need to ask you a few questions, and uh, you don't have to respond, of course, but I thought maybe the answers might come easier here in the comfort of your home than in court. Questions? The night your husband was killed, can you tell me what you did and saw? I went to Ryan's office, and I was with him from 9.30 to just before 10. When did you see Miss Richards? As I was driving away from the State House. From the parking lot? Yes. Well, you must have got a good look at her. That lot's very brightly lit. That's right. Well, how come you saw her and she didn't see you? Maybe she was so intent on killing my husband, she didn't notice me or anything else. She looked furious. Are there any other questions, Mr. McKenzie? No, ma'am. Oh, you've been most helpful. You seriously think I killed my husband? I know Karen Richards didn't. What possible motive would I have? Well, I've been asking myself that very question, and I'm stumped. Good day, Miss Allison. Excuse me. I was wondering if you know your neighbor, Charlotte Webb? Oh, sure. Pretty girl. We ain't spoke, but we've waved. Uh, what about a roommate, Jennifer Taylor? She ain't got a roommate. This pretty girl, brown hair about this tall? Nope, never seen her. Excuse me, I got washed soaking. Mind you, don't forget my flower box. I know her. Jennifer Taylor. Yeah, I seen her coming and going over at Charlotte's. Seen her where she works. You frequent the sew and save. Drifters. Strip club. Jennifer strips there? You seen her? Every chance I get. Thanks. McKinsey's dug up enough dirt to bury us all. Maybe you, buddy. I'm clean as a whistle. Save the pious act for the voters, Al. I know better. Are you accusing me of something, Dan? Gentlemen, gentlemen, let's not shoot ourselves in the foot arguing. All this is going to turn out just fine so long as we stick together. Ah. Uh... Excuse me, uh, I don't want to interrupt, but I, I, did, I didn't see a, a secretary out here. Mr. McKenzie, what a pleasure. Uh, Come right in. Uh, Please, sit down. Yes, uh, sir. <laughs> you caught us smack in the middle of a policy meeting. Oh, well, that's some job you fellas have. Try and figure out what the voters want and then giving it to them. <laughs> that's what politicians do, Mr. McKenzie. Oh, I used to think so. Oh, sounds like you don't care for politicians. Oh, I do some. Yeah, Lincoln was a politician, and Jefferson, and uh, a few others. Of course, we haven't seen their like in some time, but uh, with a little luck, uh, we will again someday. In the meantime, you're busy trying to destroy this administration. You misread me, gentlemen. All I'm after here is the truth. So if whichever one of you fellas killed the governor will just step forward, then we'll be done with it. I've got work to do. Talk to you later, John. Hmm. You don't really believe one of them did it. I believe Karen Richards didn't. What about me? You think I did it? Allison's dead and you're the governor. Isn't that what you always wanted? Fake, Mr. McKenzie. Could be. <laughs> Can you tell me where you were the night Allison was killed? Surely. I was at a fundraising dinner at the Drake Hotel from about 7 till midnight. Governor Allison called me there about 9. You didn't go to the State House to see him that night? No, we just spoke on the phone. You're welcome to check that with the folks at the fundraiser. All 250 of them. I will, Governor. <laughs> I'll check them all. Yes, I do believe you will. 
In that case, there is something I should add. Yeah. During the course of that evening, I met a young lady, very attractive, keen interest in politics. We went upstairs to my hotel suite where we spent an hour in private. You understand, Mr. Mackenzie, that no gentleman would reveal that young lady's name. Wouldn't dream of asking, Mr. Orlando. So, you can't prove that you were at that fundraiser the whole evening, is that it? Maybe not, but you can't prove I wasn't. Where have you been? Why weren't you at your desk? Uh, Mr. McKenzie told me he wanted a cup of coffee, so I had to go all the way down to the commissary oh, to get thank it. thank you, thank you. I'll drink this on the way out. Thank you. Did I do anything wrong? I don't know if Jennifer's alive or dead. All I know is that she worked at the strip club. Well, that neighbor saw her coming and going at Violet Moore's, and maybe she lives somewhere else. And then her real address would probably be on file at the strip club. The owner, Donovan, may be waiting for you. Probably. Well, let me take a run at it. Well, what am I supposed to do? Well, come here. Give Della a hand sorting through these police reports. <laughs> here you are. Live dangerously. <laughs> I'm Bill McKenzie. I need to get a look at Jennifer Taylor's employment file. Forget about it. You're not getting nothing but right out of here. Uh -huh. Hey, Will? Hey! I warned you. Take care of him, Will. Yes, sir. You okay, Mr. McKenzie? Yeah, I'm fine. Well, how are you? You and your brother staying out of trouble? When you got my kid brother off on that murder rap, I promised you that I'd keep us both clean. Good man. Give me a hand here, Will. See if you can find an address on Jennifer Taylor. Sure, Mr. McKenzie. Yeah, I'll make it sound good. Oh! oh. Ah! friend of Jennifer Taylor's I tried knocking but I guess she's not there any idea where she is uh, she just said she had to go away for a couple of days I said I feed her cat <laughs> how do you like that she left already I guess that's why she left a message for me to check on the cat there's nothing wrong with the cat did you feed it I was just going to I think I better have a look it's like I got here just in time this cat's in terrible shape I fed it yesterday yesterday this is a pedigreed Balkanese. Pedigreed? Yeah, and this is one meal that throws his whole metabolism off. Do you have any idea what a cat like this cost? I, I thought it was just a uh, stray. Yeah, well, if people knew what this cat was worth, it wouldn't be safe. Look, if, if you got things to do, I can take it from here. It's okay, sweetheart. Oh, uh, yeah. Uh, sure. Uh, you need anything, let me know. Yeah. What happened next, Sergeant Whitehorse? After we received the call. Oh, I had a notion or two she thought it was worth checking. That lady worked too hard. When we arrived at the governor's office, we found him dead. 
from an apparent stab wound to the chest. Who else was present? A security guard and Miss Richards. I show you People's Exhibit 15. Have you seen this before, Sergeant? Yes. Where was that? I discovered it while conducting an examination of the crime scene. The governor's office? Yes. Will you read that letter to the court? I won't let you get away with what you've done. Either you clear my father's name, or I swear you'll pay. Will you read the signature, please? Karen Richards. I never wrote that. I know. No further questions. Mr. McKenzie? Uh, Mr. Whitehorse, uh, was that letter handwritten or typed? The letter was typed. And the signature? Typed. And you have no knowledge that Karen Richards typed it, do you? No, sir. Now, Sergeant, uh, I'll call your attention to uh, People's Exhibit 13 and ask if you can identify it. Yes, it, it has my mark. Is this the murder weapon that killed Governor Allison? Yes, sir, it is. I have no further questions. I'm telling you, Miss Taylor never got a prescription. You filled it yourself. Okay, well, listen, make sure it goes out this afternoon. Now, she's staying at a friend's. Do you have the address? 1414 Mesa, that's right. So you got a clear look at the defendant? Yes, I did. She practically ran into me. She was in such a hurry. Did she appear upset? She looked like she was in a rage. Did you attempt to stop her? Well, I never dreamed she could get past our security. No further questions. That is a total lie. Yes, I know. Uh, no questions, but defense reserves the right to recall this witness at a later time. The people rest. Call your first witness, Mr. McKenzie. Uh, I call Rosemary Sutter to the stand. Uh, Miss Sutter, would you tell us what duties you performed as Governor Allison's executive assistant? I was responsible for his schedule, his travel arrangements, his speaking engagements, his daily agenda. I screened and placed all his phone calls. I took dictation and I processed his mail. W would it be right to say that on a day-to-day -day basis you looked after the governor's life? I only did what an executive's assistant does, Mr. McKenzie. Oh, I think you're being too modest. Miss Sutter, didn't people around the governor keep telling him how lucky he was to have an executive assistant as devoted as you? I took my work seriously, if that's what you mean. Uh, you say that you process the governor's mail. Does that mean you opened and read it? Yes, generally. The only exception would be letters marked personal. Did you open and read this letter, uh, People's Exhibit 15, uh, allegedly sent by Karen Richards and written on stationery from the Stanford Hotel? No, I did not. This letter was marked personal. However, the day the governor received it, he showed it to me. The letter disturbed him, and for good reason, as it turns out. Uh, Your Honor, move to strike all the witnesses' response after the word no. Granted. It shall be stricken. Now, the day after the murder, you went over to the Stanford Hotel, didn't you? I did not. The desk clerk at the hotel is present in this courtroom, Mr. Butler. Uh, Mr. Butler is ready to testify that the morning after Governor Allison was killed, he saw you in the hotel lobby. Now, what were you doing there, Miss Sutter? The press was all over me at the State House, demanding that I make a statement. They wouldn't let me alone. I needed some peace and quiet, so I went over to the hotel for breakfast. The same hotel that Karen Richards had uh, stayed in. You know what I think, Miss Sutter? I think that you went over to the Stanford Hotel for the express purpose of getting some of this hotel stationery, and then you type this threatening letter over Miss Richards' name. Now, if you like, I can produce expert testimony that this letter was typed on your typewriter. Am I right about that, Miss Sutter? Your Honor, would you please direct the witness to answer the question? Miss Sutter? I didn't want the press or the police to go snooping into the governor's private affairs. 
starting rumors about him, creating a scandal. So, you were being loyal to the governor when you wrote this letter, weren't you? It seemed obvious to me that Karen Richards had killed him. I was just trying to protect his name. Is that so bad? Did you write this letter? Yes, I did. Thank you, Miss Sutter. It astounds me. Any guy can come in off the street, break into a house. I mean, what is the world coming to? I'm looking for Jennifer Taylor. I don't know anybody by that name. Mr. Steele, her prescription was delivered here. What are you, a cop? You broke into my house, and you're asking me questions? You got a lot of nerve. So do you. Yeah, she was here with me. She lived here, but then I kicked her out. You know why? Because she was sloppy and a loser. Anything else? Do you know where she went? I have no idea and I couldn't care less. Is that about it? Get him out of here. Thanks for your hospitality. The defense calls Governor John Orlando to the stand. You are the governor of this state, are you not, Governor Orlando? Yes, I am. And just how did you become governor? As lieutenant governor, I was sworn in after Governor Allison was murdered. If you would kindly tell us where you were the night Governor Allison was murdered. I was at the Drake Hotel attending a political fundraiser. Now, at this fundraiser, did you run into uh, anyone besides other politicians? A young woman, perhaps? Yes, I did. She approached me, told me she was interested in politics, and asked if we could talk in private. Did you agree to that? Of course. Why wouldn't I? Where did this private conversation take place? Upstairs in my hotel suite. In the living room of my hotel suite. I am a bachelor, Mr. McKenzie. I'm allowed to entertain young ladies as best I can. Now, you live two blocks away from the Drake Hotel. Why would you book a hotel room so close to your home? Well, very often during political functions, it's convenient to have a suite for private discussions. Do you recall what time you and the young lady went upstairs? I'd say between 9.30 and 10. And what time did she leave? I don't really recall. That late. Governor Orlando, what was this young woman's name? Mr. McKenzie, I cannot compromise her by revealing her name. Oh, I understand. In that case, I have no further questions. Uh, no questions, Your Honor. Defense calls as its next witness, Robert Fowler. Now, uh, Mr. Fowler, will you tell us what you do for a living? I'm a waiter employed by the Drake Hotel. And were you on duty the night Governor Allison was killed? Yes. Uh, I was working room service that night. 
And on that night, did you have occasion to deliver room service room 228? Yeah, um, Governor Orlando ordered uh, champagne and I delivered it to his suite. What time was that? About a quarter to 10. Now, while you were in this hotel suite, did you see anyone else besides the governor? No, but uh, I knew there was a woman in the room. How'd you know that? Well, I saw a lady's suit jacket uh, tossed over the back of a chair. It was gray and had a, a watch hanging on the lapel. Oh, what kind of a watch? A watch in an antique gold setting. Uh, had roses on it, looked very old. Maybe Edwardian. Why, are you, are you an expert on antique jewelry? Not exactly, but my father was a jeweler, so I always noticed nice pieces like that. Antique lapel watch. Now, would you be able to recognize this watch if you saw it again? Sure. I've never seen anything like it. If the court please, I would ask Mrs. Emily Allison to stand. Objection, Your Honor. I don't see the relevancy. Mr. McKenzie, what's this all about? Your Honor, there are several people who had reason to wish Governor Allison dead besides Miss Richards. In a, a matter as grave as this, I would ask for the widest possible latitude. I assure Your Honor that this pursuit is not frivolous. You may proceed. Objection overruled. Thank you, Your Honor. Mrs. Allison? Mrs. Allison. Thank you. So that Mr. Fowler can get a better look at that lapel watch you're wearing. Thank you. Thank you, Mrs. Allison. Now, Mr. Fowler, take your time. Is this the same watch that you saw in the hotel suite that night? The same. Thank you, Mr. Fowler. No more questions? No questions. Defense calls Emily Allison to the stand. Uh, Mrs. Allison, you've heard uh, Mr. Fowler's testimony. Now, remembering that you're under oath, were you the woman in the hotel suite with Governor Orlando that night? Yes, I was. What were you doing there with the governor? I don't think that's anyone's business. Oh, Mrs. Allison, I have no interest whatever in your personal life, but your actions on the night of the murder are of a considerable importance given your earlier testimony. Now, how long were you in that hotel suite with the governor? I don't recall. What if I told you that I could produce a witness who would swear that you were there for over an hour? That's possible. Now, in your earlier testimony, you stated that you went to your husband's office the night he was killed and stayed with him till almost 10 o'clock. Am I correct? Yes. Yet we now know you were with Governor Orlando at that hour. You also stated that as you left the State House, you saw Karen Richards going in. Am I correct? Yes. Now that your memory has had time to sort itself out, Mrs. Allison, would you like to reconsider your testimony? I was mistaken. I didn't see Karen Richards that evening. Because you weren't there. No more questions. No questions. I called Dan Dixon to the stand. Mr. Dixon, did you speak to Governor Allison the night he was killed? Yes, I did. I spoke to him on the phone. Not face to face in his office? I was at the Cattlemen's Club all night, um, well, till almost midnight. Well, now that's an interesting point, uh, Mr. Dixon. On the day Governor Allison was killed, a legislature adjourned. After everybody left, maintenance men filled in a lot of potholes in the parking lot with fresh asphalt. Late that night, the asphalt was still soft. Now, if I told you that the imprint of your tire tread was found in that asphalt, Mr. Dixon, could that freshen up your recollection? No, I might have driven over there the next morning. Oh, no. The asphalt was hard in the morning. You were there that night, weren't you? I went there to ask him to back me against the committee that's investigating me. So, you were alone with Governor Allison in his office that night. 
distraught over the possible ruination of your career, and you want us to believe that you did not have the motive and the opportunity to kill him? I wasn't alone. I brought someone with me. Who was that? Uh, Mr. Clayton Morley. He's the contractor who's been accused of making payoffs to get state business thrown his way. Well, he wanted to make his appeal to the governor in person. So, he went in with me, and he came out with me. Uh, bring him in and ask him. Nothing further. Uh, no questions, sir. Court is adjourned until tomorrow at 9 a.m. How's our side doing? Oh, we're holding our own. Just hang in there. What's going on? Well, we knocked down Emily Allison's testimony, but since she wasn't there, she couldn't have killed him. Orlando's a liar, but now he's got an alibi. So is Dixon. I don't think Rosemary Sutter did it, so... Reinhardt is our only suspect. I'll be doggone if I know how to prove it. I think you can. I've got something. Mr. Steele is expecting me. Johnny, been a while. Let's make it fast, my friend, because in a minute I'm going to kick you off my spread. I know you're hiding this girl for the life of me. I don't know why. But unless you produce her, I'll be back in an hour with a warrant for your arrest. <laughs> for what? Obstruction of justice. Obstruction of justice. Listen, cowboy, you'll never make it stick. You're concealing a witness crucial to a murder investigation. That's a chargeable offense. Now make sure it sticks. Bill! what I found. I thought you were dead. That death was a setup, so we'd stop looking for her. You gotta come with us, miss. She doesn't have to go with anybody, do you, sweetheart? You made sexual accusations against Harlan Richards, so his death would look like a suicide, but you and I know better about that, don't we, Miss Moore? I never... Violet. You want Karen Richards convicted, Miss Moore, for a murder she didn't commit? You got one death on your conscience, you want two? Violet, would you wait for me in the study, please? You like being pushed around by this fellow, Miss Moore? You're gonna live this way the rest of your life? Is what he wants more important than doing right? Johnny. Did you ever really love me? Sure I loved you, huh? And I treated you okay. Getting her hooked on drugs was okay? Nobody can hook anybody on drugs. They do it to themselves. But you knew when you threw me out of the house what? that time that I would do anything for money. Anything for you. Including lie about having an affair with Harlan Richards, didn't you? You're a junkie. She's lying. Not now she isn't. Jennifer Taylor. She's the one that set me up. I figured you work for Johnny. Anything he wants. Anytime he wants it. You should have gone when you could, fellas. You can't let them go. Oh, heck, Miss Moore. Let's get out of here. I'm warning you. You got those photos of the crime scene? And the photos of the office from the governor's files. Well, I'll be doggone.
be seated. Mr. McKenzie? I'd like to recall Rosemary Sutter to the stand. Now, Miss Sutter, uh, I'm going to show you a list of documents which the police found in Governor Allison's office. I want you to examine this list carefully. Now, to the best of your knowledge, is this list complete? No, sir, it's not. What's missing? A fax was sent to Governor Allison's office at 7.49, the night he was killed. Well, how can you be so sure of the date and the time? The governor asked me to check the ID number and to get a duplicate. What was so important about this particular fax? It was a document that he'd requested, an audit of the Pharmacol Corporation. And why was the Pharmacol Corporation so interesting? They were doing a lot of construction for the state. And uh, Governor Allison had heard rumors that it was really a front for organized crime. He was conducting a private investigation. And this fax that came in that night was part of the evidence? Yes. He asked me to obtain the duplicate as discreetly as possible. Thank you. Now, I'm going to show you Defense Exhibit G, Miss Sutter. This is a picture of the governor's desk as it was normally kept. Now, is this accurate? Is that the way it normally looked? Yes, yes it is. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Miss Sutter. You've been very helpful. What is Johnny Steele to you, Miss Moore? We were lovers. Did you live with him for a period of time? For about two years. And when did you stop living with him? Uh, about six months ago. Is it true that Mr. Steele is currently under indictment by the federal government on racketeering charges? Objection. Relevancy. This is all going to tie together, Your Honor. Overruled. Yes. Do you know of any connection between Johnny Steele and the Pharmaco Corporation? Sure. He uh, practically owns it. Ah. And did he have a special interest in the last gubernatorial election? Yes. He said that if Allison had won, that he could keep all his dirty little deals a secret. He told you that? Yeah, he told me that. Now, for a while there, it looked like uh, Harlan Richards might win the election. What, if anything, did Johnny Steele do about that? He had me make sexual accusations against Harlan Richards. How did he get you to do that? When I lived with him, he started me on drugs. I got hooked. And then when he got sick of me, he kicked me out. Said I was a junkie. I'd never be anything else. So when he came around again and wanted me to lie for him, he knew I'd do it. I needed the money. I had to have the money. For drugs? Yes. Were these accusations true? Did you have an affair with Mr. Richards? No, I never did. Miss Moore. Are you telling this court that Johnny Steele convinced you to tell a lie that was going to ruin a decent man's reputation? Yeah, but it wasn't Johnny's idea, see? He said he had no choice in the matter, that he had to do it for his partner. Who was his partner? Al Reinhardt, the attorney general. Thank you, Miss Moore. I appreciate what it took for you to come forward today. No more questions. No questions. Defense calls Al Reinhardt to the stand. Mr. Reinhardt, I'd like you to examine Defense Exhibit H, which I'm handing to you now. Mr. Reinhardt, uh, before you became attorney general, were you and Governor Allison partner in a law firm? Yes, we were. Mr. Reinhardt, would you describe this uh, document to the court? It's a uh, standard contract for legal representation between my firm and the client. And according to this contract, who was Allison and Reinhardt representing? 
The Pharmacol Corporation. Were you aware that Johnny Steele controlled the Pharmacol Corporation when you agreed to represent it? No, I was not. No, I had no direct contact with Mr. Steele. We merely did some routine legal work for them, contract review, that sort of thing. So while your partner, Allison, was busy being governor, you involved the law firm with a known racketeer. I had no knowledge of that connection. Oh, we've heard testimony that Johnny Steele wanted Allison reelected. Now we know why. It wasn't Governor Allison Johnny Steele wanted in the State House. It was you, his silent partner in crime, the Attorney General. That is a lie. I have no connection whatsoever to Johnny Steele. Isn't it true that you masterminded the sexual accusations against Harlan Richards so his death would look like a suicide? As far as I know, Harlan jumped out that window. Am I being accused of a crime you can't prove even happened? Oh, I don't have to do that, Mr. Reinhardt. I have evidence to prove that you killed Governor Allison. Objection. Relevancy. We're not here to try the Attorney General, Your Honor. Karen Richards is on trial for murder. Any evidence to the contrary should be admissible. You may proceed, Mr. McKenzie. Objection overruled. Thank you, Your Honor. You knew that Governor Allison was quietly investigating the Pharmacol Corporation, didn't you? And that worried you. I have no idea what you're talking about. When Allison got that fax and called you demanding that you come to his office, you knew the jig was up, didn't you? You knew you were going to jail. And you figured the only way to save your neck was to kill him. Now, that's how it went, wasn't it? No. Mr. Reinhardt, would you identify this object, People's Exhibit 13, for the court? Um, it's a um, solid gold letter opener. There's an inscription there on the blade. Will you read it? The voting's done, we won, and the date, 11-5-93. Now, where did this letter opener come from, Mr. Reinhardt? Governor Allison's wife, Emily, had this made as a memento of his election victory. Oh, was this one of a kind, or were there others? Well, Mrs. Allison gave letter openers to the small group of people closest to Ryan. Oh. You still have your letter opener, Mr. Reinhardt? Of course. I'm going to show you Defense Exhibit J, a receipt from Tyler's Jewelers over on Alma Street. It's a bill for a letter opener they made for you with the inscription, the voting's done, we won, and the date, 11 5 -93. What do you know about this, Mr. Reinhardt? I lost the letter opener Mrs. Allison gave me when I moved into my new office in the State House, so I asked my assistant to order a copy. An identical copy? Of course. It's not what you got. It wasn't identical. My copy was identical in every respect. Except one. Now, it always bothered me how someone having a heated argument with the governor could have taken the letter opener off his desk and then cross clear around and stab him with it without his trying to get up and defend himself. But just supposing. What if he wasn't stabbed with his own letter opener? What do you think of that, Mr. Reinhardt? I wouldn't know. Oh, but you would, Mr. Reinhardt. You took this letter opener, the one you had made from your office to use as a weapon when Allison called you in on the carpet. After you stabbed him with it, you took the one on the governor's desk with you when you left, thinking that nobody would ever notice the exchange. But fate was toiling against you, Mr. Reinhardt. The original letter openers were solid gold. Your copy was gold plate over lead. It says so right here on this receipt. With the district attorney's permission, we'll demonstrate. No objection.
I reckon your assistant was trying to save you money, Mr. Reinhardt. The murder weapon was your letter opener, wasn't it? I'd better not say anything further. That's a good choice. Move for dismissal. People have no objection. Case dismissed. Court is adjourned. I'm so glad we got this sorted out. Congratulations, Bill. Ken, I never could have done it without you. <laughs> Come on, let's get back to the ranch and have some fun. Well, I wouldn't want to put you out. Oh, put me out. Listen, I can use your help. You know, I got the sweetest little vegetable garden that Della is just going to love. Della me. asked me to give you this. Uh... Wait a minute, doggone it. Seems like Della's best friend, Lila, has sprained her ankle and Della has gone to Hawaii to help her out. Hawaii? That's quite a trip. Well, Ken, it's just you and me. <laughs> Listen, we got fences to mend, stalls to clean Bill, out. thanks, but oh, you know... don't I... thank me. This is a treat. <laughs> Come on, if you're waiting for me, you're backing up. <laughs> 